Hi guys, Tish here and welcome back to Auto Social UK. I'm very excited today because I am currently in Milan taking a look at the brand new LBX. Now I'll be completely honest, I've been rushed off my feet. If you guys follow me on Instagram, on all of the socials, you'll know that it's been a bit mad. So I actually didn't do too much research before I came to see this car. So I've kind of been able to have a fresh look at it, learn everything very quickly and I think that's been to my advantage. I didn't have any preconceptions of what I thought the vehicle would be. Now, very quickly, I am going to say the headline that people are all going to be thinking. And if you've done any small research on the LBX, you'll know that this is based off of the Toyota Yaris Cross, which seems like a bit of a strange one because Toyota Yaris Cross, Lexus, they seem miles apart when it comes to that premium feel that you get. So have Lexus done enough to make the LBX their premium SUV in the entry level segment? Or does it kind of miss out on that quality that everyone expects? Well, hopefully that's what we're gonna answer in today's video. So if that sounds good, please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Here are some key facts. This model has been designed and engineered for the European market, so unfortunately, do not expect this model to show up in the US. It's built on the same GAB global architecture platform, but it has undergone some hefty modifications to make it Lexus worthy. You'll find the same 1.5 litre self-charging hybrid electric powertrain as the Yaris. However, it is more powerful, but don't get excited with 134 brake horsepower compared to the Cross's 116. Some of its uplifting power will be coming from the new bipolar nickel metal hydride battery, which is said to reduce weight and deliver quicker power. Sharing a similar powertrain and eCVT gearbox with the Toyota, we can predict class leading efficiency, key in this class, but an engine that may become strained under a heavy right foot. And lastly, reservations and UK pricing are due to open for customers in July, and then orders from October 2023 with deliveries from March 2024. So let's start by talking about the design because there's actually a lot to talk about on this car. When I was watching the preview going through the event, I had the pictures of the NX in my hand. I've recently reviewed that, so if you want to go check it out, you can do that. And I was looking at them side by side, trying to decide what I liked from each car. Of course, this is completely different. The NX is a very large car. It's going to carry a lot of people. It has a different kind of function. This is more of your entry level SUV, something like a Volkswagen T-Cross, that small compact SUV. So you have to kind of get your mind away from the premium Lexus and move it towards more of an entry level point. Lexus are trying to capture a new audience with this car, a fresh audience, people that have never really thought of buying a Lexus before. You've got a slightly different headlight design. This actually looks a lot friendlier. I think that was my instant reaction. You've got the NX and you've also got the RX, huge, huge grill, really aggressive. You take a look at it and it's very, very striking, but also a bit opinion splitting. Some people really don't like it and I understand that. This is much more palatable, much more friendly. You've got this scooped front bonnet and then you've got almost like a clamshell across the bottom here. This actually, to me, looks very Cupra-esque. In fact, a lot of this car has some elements brought across from other brands, which might not necessarily be a bad thing. They're kind of taking the great elements that have done well in other brands and put it onto their brand. Some of those, however, I'm gonna mention and you probably won't be able to unsee it. And in fact, I might upset Lexus by mentioning a couple of them. So coming around to the side, we have got alloy wheels here. Again, my instant thought with the alloy wheels is that they look quite small. And they are actually 18 inches, the wheels. The actual alloy is quite small, and then you've got quite a lot of tire wall. This is gonna be a good thing and a bad thing. Aesthetically, personally, I think it looks a tad out of proportion. The wheels look a little bit small. However, it does have a great function. That's gonna give it a much softer ride. It's gonna be far more comfortable. Love these. In fact, this is probably my favorite 
exterior design element of the LBX. You've got these very fancy wing mirrors and I do think they feel premium Lexus and they stand aside from other things in this segment. So shape of the car, again, it is very different from the rest of the Lexus. It's got quite wide kind of hips on it. It's quite chunky at the back. Nissan Duke. I hope that nobody outside heard that because I think I might get kicked out for saying that. But it does have a slight Nissan Duke-ness about it. Don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Actually, I think it pulls it off quite nicely. Around the back. Now, I actually prefer this to the NX, which I wasn't expecting. I really like the fact that you've got these little chrome accents, which just hug the bottom of the car. It's got less of a contrasting feel about it compared to the NX, which actually, I think this looks very good. Unfortunately, you don't have that premium element of having the Lexus kind of floating in the rear light bar. You've got it on the tailgate again, but really that is a very small difference. And I think for this price point, which is going to be slightly lower than any Lexus so far, doesn't mean it's gonna be low. This is still a Lexus, so expect in upwards of £40,000. But exterior-wise, it doesn't feel like they've scrimped. It's pretty good. Inside the boot. Now, I actually put a question to the guy who is within the design team of Lexus, and I asked, why is the boot so small? And he basically said they prioritise design. They know their customers like design, they like their cars to be very good looking. And for that reason, they have prioritised that over space. So inside this boot, you've got around 330 just over litres. Now that makes it smaller than the Toyota Yaris Cross, it makes it smaller than the T-Cross and a lot of rivals. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. You can still fit two suitcases in here. Let's face it, people who buy these small SUVs are not expecting to be able to put loads and loads of things in the boot, but there is quite a low load lip there. So if you are putting, say, a push chair in there and you need to lift it out past that lip, that could be a bit of an issue. There is also a four wheel drive version of this car, which is kind of strange for a small SUV. It's nice to be offered, and actually Lexus don't expect us to sell many in the UK, but you will completely lose the bottom of that boot floor. So I can imagine that drops it to below 300. Rear interior space, well, what can I say about it? Yeah. It's a compact SUV. You're not gonna get a ton of space in the back. There are nice little premium elements, like you do get those handy door handles in the rear, and you also get two ISO fix fitments, and you do get two USB-C ports behind little covers, which is quite nice, but then it misses out on some stuff. You don't have a centre armrest with cup holders and in fact the door cards as well are pretty small. So if you've got people sitting in the back who want to carry a coffee cup, well, they're going to have to hold it in their hands because there isn't anywhere to put it. And that's also the same with behind the seat door pockets as well. It's missing those. But I honestly think that to have the slightly more upmarket premium fill interior, it's still lovely back here. I don't mind missing out on those things. There's a few different interior packages that you can get, and there will also be a customizable package as well. I'm not totally sure we're gonna get that in the UK, but fingers crossed, we're a pretty big market for Lexus, so we should get all of those nice details. But in here, it does feel Lexus, and that is the key to all of this. It's bringing all of that lovely, high-quality Lexus materials, but into a slightly more affordable package. Yes, it isn't spot on. There are small elements which are slightly cheaper than some of the more pricier cars, but actually, everywhere you touch and feel, it's very nice. This is my favorite interior. I think this is called the cool, and don't think of it as cool as in cold. I think they're trying to go like hip and trendy because you've got a bit of Alcantara. You've also got some leather. Now there is options to have real leather and you can also have artificial leather as well. And I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I think with the move towards sustainability and wanting to be more eco-conscious, I don't really like the thought of still putting leather into our cars. There's no need. These artificial levers are really, really lovely. But if you're one of those people who wants their leather, then you can still spec it. 
this kind of center console here it's a lot more and this is really bad i forget what the lexus version is called but you know the subaru solterra you also have the toyota bz4x and there's a lexus version as well should have asked that before it has a similar kind of layout in terms of that. So you've got this center console then with the integrated screen into the center console rather than on the RZ where you kind of have RX, RZ, see, I'll always get mixed up, where you have it into the kind of windscreen. It's slightly in the way impairing your vision. This is much more integrated. It's nice and neat and tidy. You get a digital instrument cluster as well. Um, you've got a cup holder up front here and you've got a second one which is in this a little armrest it's it's quite a tidy package actually it does feel smaller than other lexuses but you're gonna expect it to this is a compact suv through and through but in terms of just general quality comparing it to the rest of the cars on the market i think they've done a very very good job so what do you think? The Lexus LBX. It's a new entry level Lexus which should bring more people into these premium cars. I actually think they've done a pretty good job. It's not perfect, but what do you expect? It's a more affordable Lexus. It's not going to be perfect in every element. But if you're looking for something which is a bit different from the norm, I bang on about it all the time. If you don't want a Volkswagen T Rock, you don't want an Audi Q3, or you don't want the BMW 2, whatever it's called, you could get one of these. And I can bet that no one else will have something which is this customizable. So if you've enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what you think of the LBX down below. And of course, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more. Also, massive shout out to Mark from Nobby on Cars for filming this. If you did wanna check out his content, then you can go onto his channel. We've also filmed a bit of a raw overview of our instant thoughts on the LBX. It's a bit more of a stripped back opinion-based video. So if you wanna see my real opinions on this car, then go and check it out. Thank you.